Hey, what is going on? Today I'm going to show you how to use Webflow Logic to connect a Webflow form over to Airtable. Just a very simple API request. We're going to send a name, an email, and a message over to Airtable so that it populates in the database like this. Hey there, Webbay. All right, so starting out looking at our Airtable base, we see it's called email form, and then I have a tab of a lead generation form, and we have an email field, a name field, and a message field. So the Airtable base is a very simple setup. Over in Webflow, we also have a simple setup. I'm using a form right here, and the form element has a name of email form. And then make sure that you click through and give names to all of your inputs. So the names here, we have name is name, and that's of type plain text. Uh, the email address is name email, and that's of type email. And then we have a message here, which is of name message. So let's go ahead and look at using logic now to push this data over to Airtable. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new flow. And I want this flow to trigger not on an HTTP request, on a, where is it? Oh, I just double click it. Yeah, so let's double click it. And we'll say on a form submission, and we'll just call this, uh, I don't know, to Airtable. And we'll select our form. And we want to use the email form that I have on the home page, not the password page. So let's grab that one. And that's really all we need to do for our trigger. And now the next step is going to be to make an HTTP request. And Airtable requires a personal access token. So we're going to have to work with authentication first. And there's a couple little gotchas here that you want to look out for. So let's call this um, post to Airtable. We're going to make a post request here. And all that means is we're sending data to Airtable. If I click on authentication, we'll select API token, and we're gonna add it to the headers here. And the header, I don't have the name for that yet because I need to ask Airtable what it is. So let's come on over here, and I'm gonna go to, this is airtable.com slash developers. So up here, welcome developers. We come down and let's go to the API docs. Now, if I'm looking at the API docs, I want to work in the workspace email form. So I've got email form here, and it's gonna actually populate the docs with a lot of the stuff that I need, like the ID of the base and all that. So I don't have to do a lot of the work. And as I scroll down, it's gonna give me some info. I'm looking at the left here. So authentication, uh, it looks like they're using personal access tokens, which can be created at slash create tokens. Now they used to use API tokens, but those are being deprecated uh, January, 2024, I believe. So you can see I've already got one here from what I tested, but they only show it to you once. So we're gonna have to create a new token here. So let's go ahead and create a new token. And this token's name will be uh, da, 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 Webflow to Airtable demo, something like that. And we're gonna add a scope. And the main thing we want our form to do is to write. So I'm gonna add it the ability, this is like permissions basically scope, is the ability to write to Airtable. And this Let's see, this token can access the following bases and workspaces. So I wanna give it access to my email form workspace. Let's go ahead and create the token. And you can see your token has created, your token has been created and it will only be shown once. So I'm gonna copy, but I'm gonna leave this dialog box up or you could store it in like, a, you know, one password or if you have any of those uh, password managers, that would be a good place to put this. But I'm not planning to save it for a long term anyway. So let's go back to Webflow. And then the header here. So what do I put in the header? now? It may be different depending on what API you're connecting to, but usually they're called authorization on these headers where we pass API tokens. And I want to use the Airtable developers. So let's go to Airtable developers, the web API. And actually I wanna get the specific one for this base. So I'm gonna go back to the main page and then scroll down and I'll get the email form one here. So our documentation is all good to go. And we can see, okay, authentication, it's taking authorization. This is the header right here. And we're in the curl tab here. Don't worry about the JavaScript. This is if you're using the Airtable SDK, which we're not doing in this case. So we're just making an HTTP post request. However, Webflow decided to do that on their backend. Anyway, so the header is called authorization. And then the key or the value to the key here is actually our API token, but with the string bearer before that. This I screw this up almost every time. Um, and then I come here, and so I know this needs to be authorization. Should probably copy paste that. But let's go ahead and add our credential. And so we'll call this Airtable PAT, personal access token. And we're just gonna say that it's an API token. And now normally I would just, okay, the token goes here, copy paste, right? No, that is wrong. So come back here, and then we're gonna type bearer right there with a space and then our token. So it needs to match exactly what we're seeing in the documentation there. Let's go ahead and create. 
And now I have my request method will be post. So I have my credential, I have my header, I have my request method, and now I need the URL. So let's go back to our documentation and we're gonna come down. What we wanna do is we wanna create a record. So this gives us all the code basically that we're gonna need. And now we can see up here is the URL that we're gonna use. And we can see this percent %20 is just an encoded, um, it's the, the space encoded to something that can fit in the URL because we can't use spaces in URLs, right? And then we can see the table ID is there. So this has everything that we need in order to make our request. Um, now we can see that header of authorization and then content type application JSON. We may need to add this. We probably won't, but let's go ahead and copy that URL. Come back over to Webflow and in the URL, I am just going to paste the URL there. So that is good to go there. I'm not going to add any additional headers at the moment. And lastly, we need to supply a body. We need to tell Airtable what data we are sending. So let's come back here and the body is kind of what's this is called um, JSON right here, JSON or JavaScript object notation. And this is the data that we have to send from Webflow to Airtable. And we can see that it's got one object here or JavaScript object with fields. And we're sending the email, the name, and the message. So what we can do is we can just copy this whole thing. So I'm going from this curly bracket to this curly bracket and I'll copy. And we could just drop this right into Webflow. However, I don't really prefer this thing, like this editor has no kind of editing force. So if we screw something up, then we're, we're just kind of screwed here. So what I like, just grab some sort of JSON editor online and paste everything in there. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna delete actually, we can see we're opening an array of records that we're sending, but we just are gonna send one record at a time. We're not gonna send multiple records. So let's go ahead and get rid of this first, this second object here. So we just have one object inside of our array. And then we have the fields key and the fields key has another object and we're sending email, name and message. And notice the casing on these, that's important. Email is capital E. And if we go back to our Airtable base, email is capital E here. So back in our JSON editor, we can just go ahead and let me change this just a little bit so we know Rick Boss and yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna, I did the editing that I wanna do. I'm gonna copy that, come back to Webflow and paste this in my body here. And so now let's go ahead and run test to complete and see what I got wrong. So we're running the test and the test has been completed successfully with status 200. So let's come into our form and see we've got hello at mm.com Rick boss, and yes, every day is really the perfect day to boss up. So our flow seems to be working. I'm gonna click apply data. What that does is it like tells logic kind of what output to expect from this, but we're just doing really one step. We're not adding anything else. So no big deal there. Um, the last thing we wanna do is that rather than send this hard coded data in between the quotation marks here, I'm going to add our properties. So I'm clicking this purple thing up here and then I'm going to come to form fields and I want to send email as the email field and then Rick Boss we want to send the name as the name and as the message we're going to delete all that and we are going to add the message there and now this little yellow gear icon says I need to provide a fallback kind of uh, data here so we'll just say uh, none for our name and for message we'll also say none Okay, and that's because these weren't marked as required on Webflow. If we mark them on re as required for name and message, then, you know, the post request wouldn't even happen. So we wouldn't have to provide fallback. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and run the test again and see what we get. And so this is kind of our logic test interface. We can choose to say no message, but we'll provide a name, uh, haha, and the email will be haha at ha 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 dot com. And let's go ahead and run the test. All right, we've had another success. Let's come over to Airtable and we see that our data is all populating over here. The final test will be to see if this works on our published site. So let's come back to Webflow. We'll apply the data. We'll publish, we'll say stage flow for publish. We will go back. We'll come back to our site and we'll publish again. All right, and let's say finish did at it dot work, question mark, no question marks in an email address and uh, none, no, uh, great, submit. Okay, submission has been received. We come back to Airtable and we see we've got all of our information here. So that is how to push information from Webflow forms to Airtable. Really simple with logic. 
I really like logic for just small little things like this. Anything where you're manipulating the data along the way or uh, sometimes I've had issues like if I have multiple people working on the project or I'm staging public, like staging some published stuff, it'll unpublish the flow. So be really careful with what you're doing. It. I would just recommend doing something really simple to start and then go from there. As always, you've got to like and subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to grow big. All right. It's a perfect day to boss up. So I'll see you outside later.